We're back. I told y'all I was coming. Uh, beverage. Now it's about to go again. I'm about to shed some light on some things. Some things that I learned. Hope y'all ready for this. Y'all better stay watching because I'm about some talk. I'm gonna talk about some things that that's affecting all of us. And a lot of people are not connecting the dots. I'm going to connect the dots for some of y'all so you can understand what's going to happen. Like literally, I went to a, a, a meeting and there was a lot of economists there. And the economists, they look at numbers. And I'm going to break down some of the things that I was told at that event. Some of it may shock some people. Some of, some of it you already know. But no matter what I put out, I need you to go look for it. I need you to go get the information and say, ooh, I don't believe that's happening. It's happening, like today. It's happening right now. All of us are involved in it. And I'm going to do it in a second. Hold on, let me, because I'm about to go in. Hold on. I'm about to go in. I'm about to show some people some things that that's happening uh, literally around the country that's affecting all of us. From a financial standpoint to where it's going to have a lot of people... Uh, one without jobs, two without money, and three it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of poverty. And like like it's not a lot of poverty right now, but it's going to be a lot of poverty. It's going to happen. I'm going to give y'all some things, and y'all do whatever y'all want to do with it. And this is just information. This is stuff that the number guys, the guys that crunch numbers, put some of this information out there, and they kind of said, okay, it's not about the economy right now is what the numbers are telling them. They're numbers, number crunchers. So I'm going to give you all some insight and some information. It all bases, you know, I, I, I call it the technology boom or the bubble or whatever you want to call it. So with technology comes the boom. And we all know that the housing market, the crash there, and we know there was a stock market crash. That was back when. And what we're going to discuss is the next crash. That's, that's going to happen. So I don't... I'm just telling y'all some stuff and y'all can figure it out for yourselves. I'm about to play connect the dots. And a lot of stuff that I'm uh, going to talk about, it's going to be the domino effect in everything that I'm saying. So y'all see the store closings out there. Macy's, Kmart, JCPenney, Sears, they've been shutting their doors in record numbers. And more and more people are starting to shop online. Then we see all these companies using computers to take your orders. And I'm stay with me here because I'm going somewhere. So that eliminates the need for people. So more and more people are going without jobs. One of the biggest things out there right now to date, we have Amazon who just bought Whole Foods. Now, let me tell you how that's going to play play out. Uh, since it, uh, done with, it got with Whole Foods, a lot of the grocery stores, are they're going under. So follow me here, family. Have y'all noticed that, you know, malls are closing down? I'm not a lot of people gravitating away from malls. We're not using malls anymore. So now we have these big buildings and stuff like that. Now, I'm from the Great Lakes State, and we have the big three. And for those who don't know, that's GM Chrysler and Ford. So let me give y'all something. My Detroit players, people from Michigan that work at, at the plants, pay attention to this one. I, I, I'm a guarantee it's going to affect you, and you might already know that it's coming right now. So now I'm going to talk about the big three. But I'm going to get into, we look at Uber, we look at Lyft, and I know some other companies are coming online, and they're taking people to places. So there's less and less people buying cars. With less and less people buying cars, shoot, I just took Lyft myself. So with more people not wanting cars, there's a lower creation. We don't need to create more cars, so that's going to affect the big three. The big three. It's going to affect you at some point in time. I can't say when. It's just numbers. That's all I said. It's numbers, so we have to pay attention to the numbers because it's happening right now. So it's going to affect the car dealerships as well. So the car dealerships are, they're not, you know, how are they going to, if people are not buying cars, car dealerships are going to have to start closing as well. Now let's talk about the real estate market. Anybody in the real estate market right now, it's going to crash. It's going to happen. So what I'm saying, I'm telling real estate investors, we have to take calculated risk for, for our real estate investors, whoever doing real estate. So a, a one way, this is just a way that you can do it for as a nonprofit doing real estate. You know, I use, I use my 501c3 and you have 
banks have a certain number of what they call non-performing assets on their on their books. They can't have so many in inventory or another bank will come in and take them over. A bank will come in and take them over. So that means they can't just pile up and have all these houses getting foreclosed and they have to get rid of their inventory. So I bring that up because as a nonprofit, you can get houses donated to you for your cause, whatever that cause may be. And you can get houses for a significant discount. You know, you can get, it's just getting in the game, getting HUD certified. And they used to have this law out there called Dodd-Frank. This is where the, the crash is about to happen. So that law was established to give banks uh, a means to kind of look at banks and make sure they're, they're doing what they're supposed to do. But now that it's gone away, now banks can qualify people easier to get loans. It's almost the same process that happened with the last crash. It's not being talked about right now. We're not going to hear about banks uh, uh, going under because it's going to banks going under creates chaos and chaos. Everybody's starting to pull their money out of it, out of wherever they have their money, even out of the stock market. And that just caused a crash, you know, faster. We know what happened in 2008. Now, let me hit on student loans. So all these things, all the things that I'm bringing up out right now, all of it has a direct effect on everything else. And it's going to be the domino effect. And that's going to be the next crash. So student loans, this is what I see. And, and y'all know it as well. Education costs. You know, hey, stop playing. The average book, $150 a pop. And people still paying for the student loans right now. They've been out, <laughs> been, been out of school 30 years. <laughs> How you still paying for a student loan and you've been out of school for 30 years? I'm just saying it's happening and we know it's happening. But, you know, we don't really talk about it because we're financially illiterate people. And we, we choose to close up when someone speaks student loans or, or someone speaks about money. Nobody, everybody's like, mm, nah, I'm not going to talk about it. But it's out there and we need to know that, you know, it's out there and we need to have steps to say, okay, well, how do we fix it? So the learning part is knowing that it's out there for these uh, college students and knowing that we just have to do better. But that piece of the puzzle is out there. So I'm, I, I tell young people when I go to the university, they'll say, don't do like I did. You know, it's, it's okay to have your, your job that you're going for. Uh, most people have that one stream of income and they set themselves up for failure. Due to the technology and what's happening, you go into what? Uh, you go into uh, a Wawa and that's only like a gas station with uh, a convenience store or you go into like McDonald's and you go in there. Everything is being automated now. So they're taking away people that can work there. Now, I, worked, I used to work at McDonald's when I was 16 years old. I'm working at McDonald's. Imagine had we back then, because a lot of us work fast food. So imagine when they take that away, what's going to happen to those young people? What type of job skills do they get? So what was told in that meeting that I went with all them economists, they said, find a skill that you're good at and do that as you're working your job. A skill that can work with people. Something that uh, robots can't replace. Something that technology can't replace. So they, they, they spoke about that because right now there's millions that's laid off. Millions. The younger generation don't really want a job. When I go speak at universities, I'm telling you, they, they tell me, well, I don't want to work for nobody. I don't want a job. I kind of want to run my own business. And I get that a lot. And you have baby boomers that can't retire right now. We're not ready. They're not ready to retire. They don't have the money to retire. Uh, they have less than what a thousand dollars discretionary income coming in, but that's across the board. Def def definitely across the board. Baby boomers want job, but we have this thing called age discrimination. People can say what they want to say. I'm an HR professional. Age discrimination is real, and they can't get the jobs because they they probably are overqualified, and and it's just more and more that's going into that. Uh, the baby boomer category, and that's the people that was born from 1946 to 1964, and it just keeps growing, but they can't retire. I was, uh, when I was in corporate, working with a guy, this guy was 76 years old, 76, still working. He said, I said, man, why don't you, you know, what are you doing? He said, I can't retire yet. I was like, woo, woo, woo. He can't retire at 76. The thing is, it's, and it's, to me, it's not really about retiring. It's about moving and doing what you want to do in a sense where you want to do it. I think as you get, you know, you in your 70s, if you, got, if you have grandkids, you should be working, you know, being allowed to be working with your grandkids or something. So a lot of Social Security, it's not going to be there, family. I'm, I'm going to tell you what the government is doing right now. But Social Security, it's not going to be there for us. 
Please don't, please don't look at like, you know, Social Security going to be my saving grace. It's not going to happen. We're sucking that pot dry right now. The government and everybody else, they're scrambling to figure out how we're going to continue to keep paying the baby boomers. They have a big a pot of people. And with less and less people working, millions out of work and more technology coming online so they can streamline their businesses, for a business owner, it's all about profits. People are great. But I will guarantee you they'd rather have profits. That's why they're bringing in all these systems. And now more and more people, uh, there's less and less jobs out there. And so if you don't have people that's paying into the Social Security system, how are they going to use the money to pay these people who need funding? So it, it's, I'm telling you, it's just not being talked about, y'all. So they don't want to alarm everybody. They don't want to alarm the public. Like, we don't have enough money just like the bank's closings, you're not going to hear about a bank closing. When the last time y'all heard about a bank literally, like literally shutting down? They're not going to tell it. They don't want to tell us, especially in big numbers, because they don't want to alarm the public. We, get, we just have to open our eyes. The signs are, are right in front of us. It's, it's out there. And I think we're too busy being entertained to notice. We have to look. We have to read. We have to comprehend. We have to ask questions. Now, this is going to touch a few. And, and, and all y'all with them 401ks, all I'm going to tell y'all is this. If you have a 401k, please find out how many, how much in fees you're getting assessed. Because this is what's going to happen to a lot of people. And this is from the economic event that I went to. They said what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to look up 20 years from now, look at where their money went, and it's probably going to be half of what you thought you had. And you cannot go back and get that money back. And it's not no, hey, don't be sitting on the phone with HR like, Oh, hold on. Time out. Something happened with my money. It's not, you can't get it back. And they're going to just calculate your stuff and say, well, the fees, th you have fees right here, fees right here. Your fees assessed 3.5%. So really, you're not getting 8.5. You're getting 5.5. So now this is the amount of money that you have left. Now you're going to be out there working. Hopefully you're not at the uh, place where the blue sign, the blue thing on your chest. Uh, may I help you, please? I'm just telling you what I know. Don't, don't be that person. Be there because you want to be, not because you have to be. So let's look at some common sense stuff. Uh, people are working longer. There's not many programs that's paying to help the elderly. Some are eating cat food. Uh, so what, let me ask you all this. What happens when the, when the money dries up? When the money dries up, have you ever thought of that you may have to take in somebody that's elderly that's in your family, maybe your mom, a dad, a grandmom. Have you thought about that money that they need to feed another person? Have you factored that into your budget? And some of us don't have any retirement, but have you factored in bringing somebody else in your household because they don't have enough money to, to take care of themselves? That's what we're not doing. We're, most of us live in paycheck to paycheck. We don't have $1,000 of discretionary income. We have no retirement. We're trying to keep up with the Joneses. We're going out every weekend. We're traveling like nothing matters. We're not going after our dreams. And we, we think we made it because we have our, our, a job and, and a house and a car. And the domino effect is coming. The crisis is going to come. And I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm just providing insight information. And you can go back and check it out for yourself. That's all. I'm just uh, raising a little bit of awareness. So what's happening with Congress? Let me tell you how Congress works. So Congress puts out there that they want to get themselves a raise. You know, let's imagine we at work and we get around, hey, y'all, uh, I think we should get a raise. Let's vote on it. All in favor, say aye. Aye. That's how Congress makes their money. That's what happens in our country. The government is not going to save us. The, most of y'all know this, that our money's not backed by anything. It used to be backed by the gold standard, right before a lot of us was even born, but it's not backed by anything. So we're just, literally, this is what's happening. Let's say you run a low on money. <laughs> this is our government. Let's say you run a low on money, you go to your printing room, and you just start making $100 bills. Mm, mm, get it, get it. Mm. <laughs> that's what you do, because that's what our government is doing. And... Let me, let me tell you how it's going to work. Uh, and this is not for me. This is the economist speaking. I'm going to just tell you what I know. So the government is just keep printing, printing, printing. Stand by, family. Brace for shock. Stand by because this is what's going to happen. At some point in time, that system that we're on, it has to implode. There's no other way around it. You cannot just keep printing money. 
There's no way around it. Something, I don't know, and the thing is, the, uh, the uh, economists, they said, well, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's no way around our system imploding because we're just printing money. Like, hold on, let me get that. We need a thousand over there, hundred million over there. We just print money like, like this, like, oh, well, that's what we're doing. How do we navigate through this? I will tell you that the best thing that came out of that uh, that talk from the economist. They said, if I were you, they said, if I were you, I would find something that's going to not involve technology to a certain extent and look to work with people because something that robots can't do or technology can't replace you on. So from me to you, what I'm telling people is it's good to have the traditional job but we need more than one stream of income family. You need at least, you need one more. If you're on the internet and you are because you're watching this, you have to find a way to make money on the internet. I don't know how you're going to do it. Find a way, period. If you're on, if you're going to get online, find a way to make some type of money. Some of y'all turning y'all nose up because y'all making a little bit of money. A little bit of money is six figures. Call it what you want to. Your little bit of money might be 50000 That's my little bit of money. So everybody has their own little bit of money. So you have to find out how you're going to... I don't care what you have to do. One stream is not going to get it. Let me tell you what's going to happen before it happens. And it's probably going to happen in November. November! It's, I'm going to tell you, I promise you. People are going to be posting that they lost their job. They're going to say they lost their job and they didn't even know it was coming. And the corporation is going to say, well, you know, we have to do cutbacks. And why do they always wait till November right before the holidays? And it's not a secret. It's I'm telling you, it happens every year. And people are going to be like, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to see the sob story. I gave all these years. I gave 16 years. And now they're, they're letting us go. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. There you have it. So don't don't say uh, you didn't know about it. this a lot of information, but check the numbers y'all reach out get help find somebody because I think it's six degrees of separation We separated by six people that can help you out that can reach out to somebody else that can reach out to somebody else That can help you out to where you can get there. You have to get up and do something I don't know what you need to do. I know you need to get up though. Not everybody has all the answers We don't have all the answers, but my thing is this oatmeal beats no meal Slow motion beats no motion at all. So we have to get up and do something. You can't, this is what people are doing every night. They're praying, praying for a sign. This is a sign right here. You asking for help, here's your help. Faith without works is dead. You can't pray and not go for it. You can't pray and say when it comes, because when he give it to you, I know I'm going to touch some people. When he give it to you, you can't go back and, uh, let me pray again. He gave it to me, but I'm just going to pray this one more time and I'm going to see if he really meant to give it to me. Get up. Get up and make it happen. I'm telling you, checkmate is coming. It's going to come. And for those that don't understand how this is all going to take place, there's domino effect. The crash is coming. From Macy's closing, Kmart, JCPenney's, more people getting laid off, to Amazon taking over Whole Foods, grocery stores are going to be closing, malls are going to be shutting down. The big three, if you GM, Chrysler, Ford, if you're creating less vehicles because more people are taking Uber and Lyft, and uh, it's another one called Turo out there, that people are loaning their cars so less people are needing vehicles to get around. The real estate market will have a crash. You please believe that one. Don't get it twisted. It's going to crash. It's a matter of time of when. It's not if. It's when it crashes. It's going to crash. The, the banks have lessened, lessened the strain because they went, we went away with Dodd-Frank. And a lot of people don't even know what's going on with that thing called Dodd-Frank. Do some research. Look it up. They're starting to release. I'm telling you right now. It's happening right now. I study the real estate market. It's happening. They're starting to release because banks want loans. That's all they care about. They don't care about their, what they call, it's called non-performing assets. All these foreclosures on their books, they can't have but so many. 
There's a thing called the charm code. A lot of people, this is going to be over some people's head. It's a thing called a charm code that goes with banks. And it goes one, two, three, four, five. And it may be some other ones. But that code lets the FDIC know how many. They, they FDIC goes in and they will take a bank over, but they're not going to tell us. It's going to be hush-hush. When they take a bank over, it's hush-hush. They don't want us to know that that bank has just been taken over by a bigger bank because that bank has too many non-performing assets. So banks come in and say, okay, well, we got all these non-performing assets, meaning assets from foreclosure, and they start giving them out to non-profits literally for free. They do it because they don't want them on their books. They write it off on taxes. So it's, it's numbers. It's charm one, two, three, four, five. And once they get to like three, FDRC start getting closer and be like, they start looking like, hey, y'all get to four. We may have to come in and take your whole bank over and, and just restructure everything. Y'all can keep your name, but y'all going to fall up under this bigger bank right here. You, they just going to buy them out. Then the student loans. Student loans, that's the number one right there. From a financial standpoint, it's breaking people. Student loans is break. And if you don't have any more money coming in, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're working that good job. What are you going to do? You have to bring something else in, family. And it has to start here first. If you don't change this, nothing in your world is going to change. If you don't change the people that surround you that can go get it, that's hungry. Nothing in your world is going to change. Your 2018 will be like your 2017 if nothing else comes in. I'm just sharing information with y'all. That's all I'm doing. I'm sharing information. I can't help but so many people, but I put the information out. I guarantee you're going to have to get up and go get it. There's so many professionals out there that, professionals that really get it done. Some people, about that nonsense. I'm going to tell you straight up. Some people, hold on, I drink to that. Some people, they're not, they, just make sure, <clears throat> hold on, let me be politically correct. Hold on, y'all see the shirt? Stop playing, hold on. Shoot, stop playing. I can sleep in early day. Early. I don't sugarcoat this. I love my life. Hold on. Let me show that one more time. Early day. This is the biggest thing I had to learn. Find somebody who's been there, done that, who did what you're working on doing. Follow exactly what they say to do. Period. Don't try to change it. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't switch it up. Don't do none of that. Follow exactly what they say to do. Because most of us, we're too proud. A lot of us too proud. We're too proud, but we're, we think we're, we're so good. Uh, I put out, uh, what's that? It's, it's an estate attorney. Uh, we had in pe people that do insurance. But the thing is, we don't want to talk to those people who do insurance to give us insurance because we know them, because we think they're trying to get over. They had their own company at home trying to work it out and make it happen. But we don't want to go through them to get insurance. But as soon as, soon as somebody pass, what we doing? Hey, yeah, we're going uh, we to do this fish fry, y'all. And uh, I'm selling T-shirts. And we, yeah, we're going to put this money together some type of way. Hey, put something out on social media. Let people know we're going to crowdfund for this funeral. You know, he was a good dude. He was, we shouldn't have to go through this. That's the community. We're going to do a fish fry. We're going to take up some money. I didn't pay for about three funerals. Personally. Hold on. Let me get that. Mm-hmm. And on average, 10 grand. Let me, Smooth. 10 grand smooth. Stop playing. It's not a game. It's not even y'all. Even if you're going to put somebody in ashes, you, you, you coming off of them. You coming off of money for real, for real. Get some insurance. I don't care who you get it through. Find somebody that's credible. Find a company that's credible. Get some insurance for your family. So when you go, at least have insurance you can pay your bills so nobody gonna have to come and take your money. So this is what the state does. I'm, gonna give y I'm just throwing some stuff out there. The state does this. So anytime somebody dies, the state come in. Oh, let me get a piece of that. Let me get your whole estate. Whether you have anything or not, they're getting first dibs, family. They're getting first dibs. If you don't have an estate set up to where you're saying my money need to go here, here, or have it in a trust to where people can't touch it, they're coming to get you. I don't care how much money you have. They coming to get whatever you have. 
They're going to do what they need to do first. They're going to do what they need to do first. And then they're going to they're gonna go like this to your kids or whatever. If you got bills, they're going to be like, hold on, let me, let me pay that one first. Let me pay that one. Let me pay that one. And then we're going to give you what's left. So now you got $13.21 to pass on to your three kids. Come on, y'all. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. If, we, if you can take a trip, you can get insurance. If you can travel, you can get insurance. If you can travel, you can get a second, second stream of income that's on the internet. I'm not saying you have to get up and go to a job. You don't have to do that. You don't have to get a second job. Work your job. Work a second income. Work a second the second piece of income, if you can watch TV for four hours, you can have a second income from something. Something that you love doing. That's it. It don't have to be nothing. You do it because you love doing it. Don't do it just to one January. That's some bull stuff. I'm gonna keep it that I'm gonna keep it simple for everybody. That's some bull stuff if you're doing it one one January. Anybody who's starting one January, do not roll with them. Do not roll with anybody who say one January, we're going to get up and we're going to do this great thing. Negative. They're not going to do nothing because come one, uh, 22nd of January, they're done. They are done. They're not looking for nothing. You don't have, we're working too hard, but we're not making anything. And, and all you money makers or so-called money makers out there, it's not what you make, family. It's how much you can keep. It's the... I need y'all to do this. Go back to do some research. Go to Jekyll Island. Type in Jekyll Island and do research on it and figure out how all this stuff started. I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct. Figure out how it all started. Go back to Jekyll Island. Ooh, you're going to find some stuff. You're going to be like, J.P. Morgan? They doing it like that? The Rothschilds? You're going to find stuff that you're going to, I'm telling you, it will kind of rip your brain apart. Like, why are we doing what we're doing if this was how it was set up back in the day? And now today it's different. So, the, the ta oh my goodness, y'all, the tax system, go back to Jekyll Island back in the day. Get it. Get the information. Look at it for yourself. Understand where taxes came from. Understand that it's a setup. It's a setup right now. W-2s. I hate to say it. Once you learn better, I hope you do better, but it's a setup right now. Jekyll Island, it was a private meeting. Private. We weren't even involved in a meeting. They sent stuff to Congress. It went all the way to Congress. They was going to call the, let me tell you, they had to change the name. They was going to call the Federal Reserve. They was going to, oh my goodness, I want to give it away so bad. I'm, I'm going to hold on to it. I want you to, I want you to look at it. Look at what they were going to call the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve had nothing to do with federal. It just sound good. Taxes. That's a setup. I'm just giving y'all advice. Do whatever y'all want to do, but it is advice. Taxes were a setup. It was, it was set up back when, and they, let's make it into law. So now we have to play the tax game. If you don't understand the taxes, you don't have to be an expert, but if you don't understand the taxes, you will not win. You will not win in this game of life that we have right now. It's not going to happen, family. You're not going to win. You're not going to win. You may think you're going to win. You may think you're doing big things. They're going to they're gonna take everything you have. You will not be as successful as you can be if you're playing the tax game the wrong way. And I'm going to put it out there for all you business owners. Stop doing your own taxes. You are not a professional. You are not a CPA. You do not go to all the classes throughout the entire year to understand how to do taxes. Stop saving $250. Stop saving $300. Stop saving some chicken change. You, all you're doing is setting yourself up to lose thousands. That's what you're doing. Because you're trying to, and I'm not, oh, I want to name names so bad, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> oh, I want to name names. I'm going to keep it like this. Go to a reputable CPA or tax strategist. Go to a reputable CPA or tax strategist to do your taxes. I'm going to keep it that way. Smooth. If you want to inbox me, I'll name names if you inbox me. Put it that way. But I'm not going to put nobody on Front Street. I don't, I don't mess with nobody's hustle. But there are some CPAs out there that's bad. I'm talking 
monsters out there in the tax game. This is what they do. This is their craft. And so for everybody who goes out there, stop doing things that you can pay somebody that's a professional to do for you. All we have is our time. Mm. All we have is our time. I, you have to get to 100% of it. And let me tell you, when you get there, it's called freedom. When you have 100% of your time and nobody can control it for you, it's called freedom. And this feels good. I'm not sugarcoating this for nobody. I'm not even going to play around with it. This is the best feeling ever. Period. Can't nobody tell me um, mm, if my mama wasn't on my, on my timeline. Woo! Y'all don't have a clue. This is the thing. When we go through the steps, find the professional people to link up with them. That's all I'm saying. Find professional people to link up with them. Pay them so you don't have to do it over a third time. Pay the CPA. Pay the estate planner. Pay to get a trust. Pay to get a L. Pay whatever you have to pay to get to what you need to get. Warren Buffett, the billionaire, says whatever you need to do to keep your business as far as taxes from getting taxed heavily, do that. Whatever you need to do, do that. And whatever you need to pay to keep it, do that as well. So most of us, most of us won't get there. Because we, uh, it's, we have a lot of egos. A lot of people got uh, letters in front of their name, letters in the back of their name. They got all these titles and they think they've arrived and all that kind of stuff. If you're too smart to get information from somebody, then you're just too smart to get information from somebody. If you're not growing, then you're probably not going to be happy. And if you're not happy, then you're not going to be growing anyway. So you might as well, you know, I don't know, figure it out. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm going to do this every week. I'm just going to provide information, y'all, stuff that I hear, stuff that I know about, stuff that I've done to create. Uh, I want people to think and get up. That's my whole, my whole thing is think and get up and make a move. Uh, we keep talking about a lot of stuff. A lot of us want to come together and do big things. But the same people, and I'm going to tell you how it is. Every homecoming, people get together and talk about all the great things that they're going to do together. I'm just for the for the college folks out there. We talk all this, yeah, we're gonna yeah, link up with me. We gonna ain't nobody doing nothing. Ain't nobody doing nothing. We got a small select few people that's gonna get up and do something. That's it. Run with those people. Stop waiting. Let go of those people who not gonna do nothing. Some of y'all have those people <laughs> probably in your house. I don't I'ma say it secret. Y'all probably got some people in your house. That's stopping y'all from getting ahead. You can love people from a distance. It's okay. Love them from a distance, but keep moving. Don't stop. If you have a dream or whatever you have, don't worry about what people going to say about you because they're going to talk about you anyway. People talking about me right now. But guess what? Oh, baby. Mm. Mm. I don't really care. Keep doing y'all thing. But this is what I do love. I love... When I, I mean, I have a lot of people on my timeline that's going for it. And that, I'm going to tell y'all, that inspires me to see y'all, some of y'all getting up at four in the morning. And I'll be like, I'm up. I'll be like, ooh, they getting it at four in the morning, five in the morning. Ooh, I'll be like, ooh, some people be up like three in the morning. I'll be up. I'll be looking like, ooh, they getting it. Like, who up with me? I'll be like, bing. All I do is hit like, bing. But I'm up working to create. That's what I do. I'm working to create. And I, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm looking for the other stream of income. That's, that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to have a stream, a stream, a stream, a stream, a stream, a stream, a stream. We need to go from three to five streams and then from five to seven. The average multimillionaire has seven streams. And then you keep going from there. And some people may tell you, oh, you're doing too much. All you got to do is look at all the other people who really getting it. And they have all these streams of income like the Warren Buffetts have 89 plus streams of income, but we're doing too much and we got one job and one side business. Really? Those are just small minded people. Don't talk to them. Talk to somebody else that really wants to go get it with you. So you can do it by yourself to a certain extent, but it's not going to work out. You're really not going to explode until you actually get with a group of people. I'm saying a group, 
a group of people that really that's hungry and y'all meeting and having conversations and saying, hey, I have this idea and they're not going to knock your idea down. Every time you put something out there, they just knocking it down like, nope, that ain't going to work. Nope. And they haven't tried nothing. The same people that's pissed off that they work in a nine to five, never had a raise, been there for like 15 years. They're not going to do nothing. They haven't done nothing. They watching TV right now, probably right now, just on the tube, watching four to six hours of TV. Then they're going to go to work tomorrow mad because their team lost. Then they're going to be pissed off like they getting paid from that team winning or losing. No, you ain't making no money. Sit your behind down. And then you're going to, this is what's going to happen to a lot of people right now. November going to come, everybody working double overtime. That's what we do. We're going to go get this. I'm about to go make this money. That's what I hear all the time. Yeah, I'm about to go get this money. Warren Buffett said, if you have to get up to go get your money, you're not making money. Warren Buffett said, <laughs> Warren Buffett said, Warren Buffett said, you better believe it. I, I follow, I'm just following successful people. That's all I'm doing. I'm not where I want to be, but I promise you, I'm going to listen to those who are where I want to be. And Warren Buffett said, if you can count your money, all you putting money to the ear people, if you can count your money, you don't have money. So keep on, you know. Can you hear me now? Can you do that? Do whatever you want to do. It's okay. It's your life. It doesn't matter. I don't really focus in on other people's lives. I'm like this. I, I have visors to this stuff. I congratulate people. Hey, claps up. Mr. Deontay, I see you just got another house, sir. You killing the game, man. Go get it, brother. I'm loving what you're doing. People watching you. And I love that you just, it's quiet as kept. Next thing you know, all of, this is what I love about Deontay. This is what he does. He puts a picture up at the table. Signing another contract. Got another house. <laughs> kill him, man. Kill him. You better kill him and keep going. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying. What's up, Cassandra? I'm just pointing at people. Point them out. I'm going to point y'all out. Let's point people out. Now, I'm just seeing... Uh, I'm just adding a little bit of insight into, you know, what we need to be doing and what we should be doing. But when you go back and, and watch this, I put together, I think I, I call it connecting the dots of where we are from a financial standpoint. But where we are as a financial standpoint is we're going to be, it's not going to be good, family. I'm just, I mean, I don't, I can't change all the, uh, the domino effect of what's happening right now with Uber taking over, all the store closings, people not having jobs. So when I'm speaking to the universities, I, I truly have to give them, I give them 100% of me when I go in there. I don't sugarcoat it and I tell them some of them might not get jobs. And I tell them with the state of America right now and how uh, a lot of technology have taken over, I want them to have a side gig because some may be going through six months before they get a job and they get frustrated. Because they don't have a job. And it's like, well, I know you went to school and you got four years of school and you got this degree and you think you're supposed to get one. It's not going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. I know people right now with two master's degrees. No job. No job. Because that's all we know. And we telling these kids the same thing. This is the one thing that, that just pisses me off. It pisses, it pisses me off, y'all, for real, for real. This is the one thing that pisses me off. If you don't like what you do, why are you telling somebody else that's coming up, that's learning to do what you do? Why would you tell them if you don't like getting up in the morning, if you don't like doing this specific job, why are you telling them how great it is? And you, you, why tell them the truth, tell these, these students the truth about what it is you do. And if you don't like it, say you don't like it. Give them an opportunity to dream and we're stripping people from their dream because we want them to have you, it, no longer can we go out and get the cookie cutter job and stay there for 20 years, y'all. It's not happening. It's, we're done with that. You may stay three or four years and you're going to get fired. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> Uh, we're going to have to let you go. Hold on, hold on. <clears throat> we're going to do a restructuring. So they're going to restructure your job. And now you're going to have to go find another <clears throat> mass plantation or job. And, and that's all it is. So my thing is this. Find something that you love doing. Find a way to create income from it. That's what you do. Find, a, find something that you love doing, but find a way that you can create income from it. We all have something that we're an expert in. I don't know what it is for you. Find it. Dig deep. Like, go in here. Turn the freaking TV off. Turn off the radio. Turn off the bullcrap. Turn off going out. I'll toast that. Drink to that. 
every freaking weekend, at some point in time, you got to put time into you. The best person there is is putting time into you. That's, I don't know what else we can do. We sit here and act like everything is fine. No, everything is not fine. We are going to go through it economically. We are economically, oh my goodness, it's the money that's being printed right now, it's going to implode. It's going to implode. You can't keep printing money and nothing happens. I don't know what's going to happen. We need a reset button. That, I don't, you know, we need a reset button or something, but something is going to happen and I don't know what it is and it don't look good. And I spoke to people who crunch numbers. I spoke to number crunchers. They, know, they wanted to talk about nothing but numbers. Like, no, no, the number is state. And I was like, it's coming. It's coming. And I'm just trying to show people we need to be prepared. So uh, when I went to, you know, I, I follow Robert Kiyosaki as well. He was saying real estate, gold, silver, talking about commodities, oil and gas. Those are the things that he spoke about. And, you know, people can do what they want to do. A lot of people in the stock market, some not. This is the thing that kills me as well. So. I follow Warren Buffett, and those that know Warren Buffett know he made a lot of money in the stock market. So Warren Buffett is another guy by the name of Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio is a he works with the he's the CEO of a hedge fund. Hedge funds they just have a lot of money. So he's the CEO of a hedge fund, 150 billion with a B, billion. So Warren Buffett, you got Ray Dalio, you got all these billionaires. They're discussing what we common folks, you know, we can be common. We need to do in the stock market what we need to do. And it's laid out. Boom, boom, boom. So I read the book. I read everything. I said, okay, well, uh, I did research too because I listen to these guys, but I do my research. So my research says over the last 25 years from the stock market, the stock market as a whole has created, I'm going to go low on the low end, 8.5% return on investment, right? 8.5% return on investment, but I know it's more. But let's just say over the 25 year period. So I tell people this stuff. So you can invest in the S&P 500 and this is not uh, stock advice. None of that. This is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. This is not no CPA advice. I'm not a CPA. This is information. You need to research yourself. Just information. So 8.5% over the course of a year, 12 months. So we have some people with their money in the bank making 0.5%. People with CDs making what? 2%? Well, people with bonds, come on, family. If inflation is above 3%, it's probably like 5 But if inflation is above 3% and you're making 0.5, are you winning? Uh, 0.5, 3%. Are you winning? Are you ever going to catch inflation? So if you don't do nothing else, read, read, the, read a book. On Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio, and let them tell you where you need to put your money. This is what you don't do. And this is what people do for me. People try to tell me what I need to do in the stock market. And then I tell them what Warren Buffett said. And they said, uh, dude was like, I don't know about that. I wouldn't do it like that. Okay. You're no Warren Buffett. <laughs> Follow successful people, period. But we have to really do what they do. L literally, if they say to do it, don't try to question it. Don't try to say, well, I was, I'm going I'm to do it like this. No, no, that's not, we're not going to win that way. If you knew what you thought you knew, you'd already be where you wanted to be. Just follow successful people. If they give you the information, take it and run with it and actually do it. But dig, do your research on it, but do it anyway. So that's where I, that's where I come from, from a position of strength. Anything, I'm going to tell y'all right now, anything that I put out, anything I put out, I've done it. Nobody's going to tell me that it does not work. You can say whatever you have to say, but I do it first. I learn it. My goal is to become an expert at it. I do it. I learn it. And then I teach it. That's the only thing I can do. And then I say, go get, you know, go research it because I'm going to give you up until a certain point. I can only give you everything I've done. But check this out. I can teach you how to be done working. Please believe that. I can teach you how to leave a six-figure income. I can teach you how to do a nonprofit. I can teach you how to uh, get paid to speak. I can teach you how to write a book. I can teach you how to 
do it's just stuff that I've learned that I go pay these people to to learn because I need the information. So it's not like oh he trying to be this he trying to be that no it's not that I just know I have four generations that I'm looking after that's all. When I leave here everything is solid. I can leave today good God willing if I leave today everything's solid. It's good on my end it's good because I set it up like that. So I'm trying to show people that we don't have to work. People working to 70 years old, come on, y'all. It kills me. I go to, sometimes, I'm in Walmart like 5 in the morning just because I had to go grab some. But anyway, I go to Walmart 5 in the morning. You got people, they look like they zombies up in that place. Like, I'm like, dang, I be feeling bad for people. And <laughs> the thing is, I, not to laugh, but I, I say, hey, give me, give me a call. I think I got something that can help you out. And what I do, I tell people, don't do what I do. Do what you love doing, what you want to do. That's what I'm telling people, and that's what we all need to do. We all love something. I don't know what that is for you, but if you're not digging inside to understand what that is, you will not win. I'm meeting too many people with the 800 credit scores. It's driving me crazy, y'all. Too many people with their house paid off. Well, really, right now, 33% of America has their homes paid off, but a lot of people are not utilizing that money. So you got $250,000 sitting in the house making $0 for you. If you even took that dog on $250,000 and put it in the bank at 8.5%, not the bank, but into the stock market, the S&P 500, at 8.5%, would you not be doing better than zero? That's all I'm saying. If it makes sense to get a 0% interest for 12 months because you have, have an 800 credit score, does that make sense or no? And it's not for everybody. I'm, I'm not speaking to everybody. I'm going to give y'all a little bit and, and you go off and do, go do great things. Connect with those like-minded people that can help you out to get to whatever goal you, you're trying to go to. That's what we have to do. So I, 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 do, I go live to uh, answer questions. I go live to help people. I go live to inspire people. I want people to do better, to do more because we have it inside of us. And a lot of us, this is what I see. I see a lot of professional people. I mean, like, Man, I be hearing people sing. I be seeing people make cakes and do. I'll just be like, wow, I wish I had that skill set. I wish I had that technical thing. I wish I could do that. But they're not utilizing their skills. they like, whatever. They're just not utilizing it. And I don't know why. Uh, some people are scared. Some people uh, are comfortable. I think a lot of us are comfortable. And I was there. I was very comfortable. You can't tell me nothing about money. I'm like, I'm good. I was that I'm good person. Until I really had to sit back and look at everything and how people who are like really good, how they live. And I'm like, whoa, some, we don't have a clue. Some people are like really, like really living this life. Like, well, uh, tomorrow I think I'll fly to Italy for lunch. <laughs> Without a care in the world, like boom. <laughs> they fly to Italy for lunch, having tea, flying back. Like, well, that's, you know, that's their lifestyle though. And we get we get mad at them people, but we look at those people like, I want to be just like them. I want to. I wish I didn't have to work. No, don't say you wish you had didn't have to work. Work harder. Work work harder. You know, work harder. Get with the right people. Surround yourself. It's only gonna be like three percent of people. I, I think three three percent that get it. That think how we think. It's not everybody. Some people don't, don't even know what the heck I'm talking about right now. And it's it's not they fault. They just haven't been exposed. And uh, all you uh, people who uh, I gotta put it out here. all you people who want to make uh, excuses, I could be one of those that give them. I promise you, I could be that guy. I could be like, yeah, uh, you know, I used to make bad grades coming up. Uh, started out in projects. Uh, shoot, I, I didn't know my dad. Uh, uh, let's, let's, we can just keep going. Powder eggs, powder milk. Uh, you know, it, we can just keep going down the line. You can give up or you can keep going. Give up or keep going. That's it. 45 seconds, family. That's what I'll give you. 45 seconds of a pity party. And I'm going to ask you a question. Do you want to keep going or do you want to quit? Don't ever, ever, ever come to me and say I'm interested. Never. I need you to be committed. I need you to decide that you want it, that you want to change up whatever it is you're doing. And if I have it to give to you, I'll give it to you. If I have it to give to you, I will give it to you. Or if I know somebody that has it, oh, boom, go get it.
Go get it from that person right there. They a monster in this area right here. I know so many people that's good at what they do. So I, I say, oh, that person, I, I'll get, she, she's a bad, she's bad, she's good. Go talk to her. Oh, he know what he's doing. Go talk to him. I just, we have to just, you know, I don't need anything from that. Go get that. Go make it happen. But don't mess up my relationship with them because you jacked up. I need you to be committed. And I'm going to be, I'm going to, I, I promise you I can tell if you committed or not. I promise you I can. I'm going I'm to listen to you on the phone. We have a conversation. We have a sit down. I can tell who's committed, who want it. Like I'm talking about, they want it. And the people that want it, I've been over backwards for y'all. I've been over backwards and give, I'll be like, it's, it don't have to be on nothing else. I've been over backwards and give you, I give it to you because I see you, there, you, you committed. I met this guy 20 years old. Uh, two weeks ago, two weekends ago, monster at 20, full ride, full scholarship. And he was like, I'm going to tell you something. I, I got up and spoke at the, uh, an event and he was like, I don't want to work for nobody. He's only 20. He's doing real estate. He's getting, he has a business. He's, he is killing the game. And I was just like, ooh, we, I said, I need a cup. In my mind, I'm thinking, I got to keep up with this dude. He killing the game. <laughs> See, a lot of us look at that look that guy 20 years old and be like, oh, he don't know nothing. Stop playing. I met these guys 22 years old, made 2.1 million. Mm hmm. That's what I did. Hey, guys, uh, let's get around here. Come on, let's get around. Let's talk. How y'all doing today? Everybody OK? OK, OK, sure. Uh, uh, what are you guys doing? You know, you made 2.1 2. 2. million in the uh, in the real estate market. What are you guys doing? So they gave me some insight. I was like, "Ooh, y'all should have never told me that. Y'all, they done messed up now. And that's the thing. You you have to be able to go after the information. Information's out there. Uh, let me plug this up. The money is out there. My thing I tell everybody is there's no shortage of money. And if you tell yourself that enough, and when you believe, when you start to believe that, nothing can stop you. I just got a deal uh, on my table. Let me see if the guy's on. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know if he's on right now. Uh, deal just came on my table. Uh, 2.1 million for a hotel. And most people be like, ooh, 2.1 million. The thing is, it's, it's, it's not about the money, family. It's not about the money. The money has nothing to do with it. Somebody else just gave me, a, uh, put something on my table, uh, a hotel down in Miami, right on the beach, 120 million. 120 million. It's not about the money. So most people shut down. When you get into like, over 500,000, shoot, some people, 100,000, people shut down. Up, oh, I don't have 100,000. It's not about that. Nobody asks you for the money. This is the thing. Money can be created. Deals can be structured. And that's how we have to go about doing what we do. We surround ourselves with those people. You don't have to have it, but you may know some other people. And if you don't, it's time to start meeting people who have 120 million. And this is what I see people do as well. I'm in the real estate world. So people, I think, I don't know if they're trying to impress, trying to impress me, but they don't, I'm, I'm not impressed by money. So this, I'm talking to this guy. He was like, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm looking for this hotel. You know, I'm looking for some hotels, this, this, this. I said, well, and this is what you don't do. All my real estate folks out there, stop taking information from people when they don't want to give you details on what they're, what they need. They should be able to give you details on what they need if they, if they asking for it. So I go through a criteria of asking, okay, what specifically do you need? Because if I find it. I don't, I want you to buy it. If I find what you're looking for, because I get a lot of phone calls, I want you to buy it. And so I get all these people hit me up. Sky hit me up. He was like, yeah, I'm looking for this hotel. I was like, well, what's your criteria? He said, oh, I just need uh, over 250 doors. I said, no, what's your criteria as far as funding? How much, you know, how much do you, what's your range? Oh, I don't have a range. You don't have a range. Okay. I said, well, uh, uh, <clears throat> I have one right now. It's three hundred million dollars uh, down in Miami, right in South Beach. Oh no, no, I no, we're not doing that. We're not doing it like that. But see, what I wanted to do, I said. So you telling me you have a range? Is that what you're telling me? Don't. It's it's not that. It's not about that. So all my real estate folks, get educated in real estate. Get educated in the verbology and the verbiage. Oh, look at them words, baby. I graduated. I graduated. But no, understand the language of real estate. That's all I'm saying. So some people try to talk commercial. I can speak to you, commercial talk on the real estate side, and I will know if you understand commercial or not. And some one guy was talking to me, but I went in and I went, I seen him post something online and I was like, 
Mm. So I inboxed him. I said, brother, pick up the phone. Let's talk. And then I had to educate him to let him know that that's not commercial. We don't speak like that. So what you just posted, you, pr you need to take it down and say it like this. And the reason you need to do that is because you sound uh, like you're not a professional. So, you know, it's all about helping each other out and educating as well. Woo! This is the longest live I've ever done. Oh, my goodness. And I started out just wanting to give y'all some economic stuff that's happened, uh, like it's happening like right now. That, you know, y'all, it's going to affect everybody on this line. Everybody that listens to this, I guarantee you it's going to affect you. I just want y'all to be ready whenever it comes. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle is be be ready to receive. Stop praying and stop not being ready. Because when it comes, it's, it's when it comes, to, when I get it, when I get mine, I'm like, it's almost overwhelming to where I'm just like, ooh, what am I going to do? But then I think back to, ooh, you prayed for this. You prayed for it, so work it. I don't care if you prayed for it, you better work your behind off and make it work. No matter what has to happen. Some of y'all have to cut it out. And let me give you a few steps. These are steps that I use right here. So what I did, I created a calendar. Not really a calendar. I did a week. My mentors told me to do two weeks. And I started it out with one week. Just one week. Monday through Sunday. So what I did on my calendar, I started looking at time. Because all we have is time and memories. So I looked at time and I started breaking down my time. And I went from 4 to 4.30, 4.30 to 5, 5.30 to 6. And I started putting in the things that I did during that time. Even sleep, even work. I put all that in there. So at lunchtime, I would do, you know, I'd go to work during lunchtime. I hope my phone is charging because if it cut off, that's it. It is what it is. Let me make sure it's not going to cut off. And uh, no, I'm not even going to check. I got it plugged up. So I look at time. And so what I did is I, I took that sheet of paper and I did my numbers and I started putting in things that I do during that time. And what I found out is I was watching a lot of TV. I had six hours and of, uh, of TV, but it was during March Madness. Anyway, but I had six hours of TV and I started looking at it like, wow, that was during one day, March Madness. I'm a... <clears throat> It was just, it was just, it's inside of me. You know, I'm a competitor. So I'm watching so much TV. And even outside of Match Madness, I found myself having like gaps in my schedule. Like, ooh, I have four hours that I'm not really doing nothing. So I, I looked at Monday, Tuesday, all the way to Sunday. So what I did, I restructured everything and I had to cut the TV off. And I'm not saying cut the TV off because some people, I ain't cut off the TV. My shows come on. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is figure it out for you. The way you figure it out is the way you figure it out. I'm just telling you what I did. So I cut the TV off, cold turkey, boom, I'm done. Because I was watching uh, LeBron and them, they was in the playoffs, and like he hasn't been in there the last seven years. But they was in the playoffs, and my mentor told me, they're making millions, you know, when you're going to get yours, blah, blah, blah. So I cut that off, I cut out the radio, I cut out the bull crap, and I started actually putting the time into my business, into my craft, into doing more for me. And that changed because then my money went up. And then my money went up. And then my money went up. And then I started taking that money and I started paying down bills. <clears throat> Y'all don't feel me. Y'all think this is a game. I started paying down bills. So what I did, I'm paying down this bill. And I was like, ooh, pay down that bill. Ooh, paid off the car. Ooh, paid off the truck. Ooh, I paid. I started, and now I got the title. Stop playing. So now I started paying down those bills and stuff like that. And then what I saw, let me tell you what I saw. I'm in corporate still. So what I did, I stopped using my, my, my check from corporate because I wanted to leave. I'm just telling y'all what to know. I wanted to leave. And I said, okay, I don't want to use this check. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put that check away. I'm not going to use any money. And this is another thing I did. It was a little bit extreme. So I went to a point to say, I have to pay my mortgage. And I can't use my check. I have to use the money that I create. Let me tell y'all something, family. If you're ready to leave your J-O-B, please stop for a second because everybody want to leave. Stop for a second. Let's think about this. Take six months. Bank the check for first month. Bank, bank, bank. Whatever you got to do with the money, put the money away for six months. 
Do not, do not, do not use that money. If you're serious, if you're committed, don't use it. No matter what. Figure it out. So have side businesses, whatever you got to have. Make sure that whatever you have can pay the mortgage, the car note, the cable, the phone, the everything that you have. If you're serious and if your cable bill is 100 bucks, cut it off. If you, Only if you're serious. You know, those that don't want to cut it off, keep doing what you're doing. I ain't mad at you. You know, some people got $220 cable bills. Keep doing what you're doing. I ain't mad at you. So that's $220 taking going paying off that bill. So what I did, I kept paying bills off. Boom, boom, boom. Then it got to the point. So I did ballistic missile defense family, protecting all of y'all. I was protecting all y'all. And I love, I love, 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 love my job. It was bigger than me. But it came to a point where I was like, it came to a point where I was like, oh, shoot. I'm going to be able to leave this job. And it was scary. At the same time, I was like, why would I leave a six-figure income family? Let's be for real. Why? Why would anybody? And this is not to, to big up anything because the money means nothing, truthfully. Just to let you, un let you know, it's about freedom. It's about forget the money. Let's get to freedom. The, mm, some of y'all can get that later. So I got to a point to where I'm sitting in there at my desk like, man, I'm going to be able to leave this job. And I was like, man, am I really going to do it? And it was, I'm going to tell you, that's the most scariest thing ever. And I, I, I didn't have to. And some people don't get it. This is the one thing you can't say to an entrepreneur like myself. A, I mean, true entrepreneur. Never, ever, ever, ever tell me I should get a job. You, I would rather you spit on me. That's how serious I am about what I'm doing, period. I'm that serious about what I'm doing. And when you get serious and you say, okay, I'm going to bank those six checks. I'm going to use whatever I have to pay down these bills. And I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going for it. But the thing is, when you cut the TV off and cut out the bull crap and you look at your time and you really, really put your time into your craft, I'm talking about forget going to the parties. Yo, you come in here. You know, no, I ain't going. I got something I got to do. I have something I have to do. I can't do it. I can't go to the party. You can't make every party, family. Put some work in. I don't care if you up to three in the morning. What's going to happen? I'm going to tell you and I will guarantee this one. This is what's going to happen. If you stick to that, I'm talking stick to it. I don't care if it take a year, two years. You have to stick to it up late at night working like sleeping at the table, forgetting to eat. When you get to that point, then you can say, okay, and you come up out of there and you get to here. When you get to here, when you get to here, I'm trying to tell you, when you get to here and you can walk away from it all and say, Sit back. Get up when you're done sleeping. When you get there, I'm telling you, there's nothing better. There's nothing better. Can't nobody tell you nothing. And then they're going to tell you this. You're lucky. You're so lucky. And all you got to do is you think back to when you was up at 3 in the morning. You think back when you was like, well, how the hell am I going to pay this note? How the hell am I going to eat? What am I going to do? If you're serious, only if you're committed. I don't have any other money coming in. The note is due in five days. Do you skip a month? Do you not pay it? If you're committed, you won't touch your other money. Only if you're committed. Because that's going to put you to the test to understand if you can leave that J-O-B. Because if you can leave that and you put six months away, now you have six months to go all out. And when I'm talking all out, you got to cut everything out, family. You got to cut everything out. Some of y'all not going to taste freedom. You're just not, it's not going to happen for you because you're not dedicated enough and you're not committed enough to yourself and, and you're not committed enough to your family. To my men out there, now y'all going to see I'm, I'm, I'm hating. Dude's going dude's gonna to talk about me. Charles, think he this, think he that. No, no, I'm going to tell you about yourself. To the men out there, the women are working hard as hell. Women tired as hell. Women working two and three jobs as a man of the household. Why, why can't you get it? As the man of a household, you want to be the king of the castle. You want the big piece of chicken. Why can't you get it? 
Why do they have to work two and three jobs? My grandmother told me if a woman has to have a job and a man, one of them has to go. Women stop settling. Some of these dudes is just sorry. They don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to build. If a dude, dudes are, are, they pissed off about paying for a meal, a $20 meal. If you have that mind, if a dude has that mindset, you can't build with somebody like that. You can't build with somebody who has a mindset who pissed off over $20. You can't, you can't build with somebody who has that messed up mindset. It's not going to work for you. I'm just telling you, you people are going to hate or whatever they want to do. But so this is what's happening. That I see it in the community of people, women working two and three jobs, have kids and everything. They're doing their thing. And so a man comes in and, and, and she won't let go because she haven't had the opportunity to let go. It's been too many years. So she can't let go because shoot, she had to do it all, all herself all this time. And then you come in as a man and be like, well, you know, who paying for this? Negative. Negative. I, I I don't get it. I, I, I promise I don't get it. And if you got up, money would be no issue. Money shouldn't be an issue because we as breadwinners, as men, even back when, because I'm I guess some you can call me old school, whatever you want to call me, as the breadwinners, even though women outproducing us and everything like that, but as the breadwinners, and I know some of my dudes out there, they can attest to this because I know how hard they work and I know what they do for their families and, and for their kids and everything like that. I get it. I get it. And I'm I salute you, sirs. That's really going after it. And some of the other dudes, you, you got to step. Come on. Mm, come on. Come on. Just stand up. Be a man about it. Be a man. It's not about the forget $20. If you arguing over $20, it's just you haven't changed up here yet. Take ownership. Become the man. Do that. So the women can, you know, they let them relax a little bit. It's okay. Get in the kitchen once a week or something. I see women cooking seven days a week. I promise you, I can promise you this. Hell no. Y'all got to say hell to the no. Nobody should be cooking seven days a week. I know you want to cook for your family. I get that. Uh, Domino's, y'all better order out one. You got to take, I'm just, all I'm saying is we have to take some type of breaks and you got to come to you and you have to, uh, women, they don't take care, they take care of themselves last. And so if you do that time and time and time and time again, you're going to be, you're going to be crushed. You're crushing yourself and you, you're not going to be who you're supposed to be because you're, you're so freaking exhausted. How in the hell are you going to do something for, for yourself? Take time out for you. You have to, I don't care who you are. And for the men to the women, women, we need y'all. Please believe that we need y'all to be the backbone. We need y'all. We need help. We truly need y'all to help us out to guide us. Cause, you know, we get in trouble. That's what we do. You know, we get in a little bit of trouble. But no, we need y'all to help us out, really. We really do. We truly do. But be the woman that you could, that, that you should be. And I'm not going to get into how women are supposed to be. I can only speak on what I know as a man. So I'm going to leave that for some other women. You know, we, we police ourselves. I, I police the dudes. I, don't, I, I stay out of that other side. That's not my thing. I'm just saying be the woman that you should be for your man or whoever it is you, you for. That's all I can say. But we can do so much together. When we are a people, we are unstoppable. As a people, together, unstoppable. We can't be, I'm telling you, we are unstoppable. We can't be stopped. Ooh, I want to just, I, it's like I just want to go, like, I'm, I'm going to do some uh, events where it's just men because there's some stuff we have to, you know, get off these shoulders or what have you, but it just needs to be men there. And we need to have heart to heart, man to man, like man to man. I'm, because I need people to stand up. I'm going to keep it simple. I need people to stand up. I need, I need this society, y'all. I'm seeing it. I don't even know how to explain it, but it, I can speak, I can speak better if it's just men in the room, because there's some things that, uh, Men need to hear. Women don't need to hear it. We just have to come from another man. It needs to come from another man and say, hey, brother, this is what we need to do. This is, uh, but I'm going to be there with you, though. 
I'm not finna, I'm not going to let you by yourself. I'm, I'm going to be there with you and show you how we can do this and we can build up our families, our, our, our families. Because men out there, some of them working two and three jobs, struggling, trying to make it for their families, trying to make it work. And hey, hand claps, brother. Hand claps to you. I, I, I get it. I, I truly understand. I truly understand that you need that woman that's going to be your backbone. I get that. We all want that. So hand claps to everybody who's showing everybody how it's supposed to be from the men and the women's side. Hand claps to you. I, I commend everybody that's doing it. So I'm going to keep doing these events live, giving people insight, punching people in the throat like, ugh. And for, you know, for legal terms, I'm not putting hands on anybody. You know, I, I'm not that guy. I can't go to jail because I only got a few jokes. But I can dance, though. Stop playing. But anyway, uh, thank y'all for getting on, y'all. You know, go back, share the video if you want to. But I guarantee you it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, the first part of the video was more on the economics and what we're about to face and how, I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to be a domino effect and we're going to go through it. So prepare now. Before everything happens. God bless all y'all. I think I'll be getting up probably about 9 a.m. No big deal. Uh. <laughs> oh, shoot. Y'all better take it easy. Have fun. Do what you do. I didn't plan on being on this long. I really did. But y'all have a good one.